Guys, it's your boy to moan. Good morning and welcome to another video. Today's video, since all the hype is over and everybody's got their Lunas, hopefully by now, uh, with all the crazy summoning, I wanted to kind of talk to you guys because I'm sure a lot of people out there, like, now that the hype train is over and they've got their Luna, they're like, now how the heck do I even use her? Uh, so I wanted to kind of talk about that, give you guys some perspective and kind of help you guys prepare. Um, I want to talk to you guys about some plans that I intend to do due to some... I guess opportunities, challenges that I've run into uh, that I that could definitely help optimize uh, my team comp. So first and foremost, uh, w when you look at Luna, let's talk about stats and kind of what I'm looking at. Her imprint overall is plus 4.8%, which can help. Um, and these are the stats of my Luna right now at level 51. Okay, so she's at 2400 attack, um, 9422 health, 62% crit, 208% crit damage, and 61% effectiveness. Uh, the way that I have her built is uh, crit damage, I step to max this necklace, uh, uh, attack, attack. Uh, for those of you guys wondering where this lifesteal set came from, it came from the Abyss. And this hit set is just, it's just a set that, you know, I've been getting out of Wyvern. Now, I'm in the process of testing Daydream Joker, uh, since I finally pulled some of these, <laughs> and I'm able to use them. Um, I'm playing with some stuff right now that's, um, I'm trying to see if it's more beneficial to run, like, double death break or single death break, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and just kind of playing with that overall. In terms of skill ups, I was kind of torn uh, which one I wanted to skill up first. Um, I'm thinking that skill 2 is probably, or her passive or skill three are probably the best two to invest in first and foremost just because the uh, just because the value of them is so crazy so i went ahead and get the uh the plus seven percent to all stats we got and we need a few more um a few more Mologora, so I can go ahead and get these, get this knocked out and get the plus 3% uh, to give a total of plus 10. Now, how this passive works is it basically um, increases the attack and the critical chance by however much percent you added to it, up to a total of 30. Now, the beautiful thing about this is since I'm getting the extra 27% here, um, that basically brings my crit rate to 89 Okay, so the beautiful thing about Luna is, is she's she's a little bit easier to build, especially if you max that second skill, uh, because she kind of gets a head start in every fight. And then if you're stacking a crit rate buff or a attack buff with you know with an attack buff on your team, that could definitely 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 help you out. Also, uh, her skill three <coughs> is also important, uh, mainly because you're looking at trying to get that 100% as soon as you can. But I'd say these two are probably going to be your primary options when, you know, building your Luna just because how she rolls. Now, in terms of putting her on a team, we're going to do a Women 11 run. I want to show you guys. Um, and I want to talk to you guys a little bit about something that I'm, I'm kind of experimenting with and playing with. Uh, initially, my first thought was don't strip Terranor Guard, put Luna with Terranor for the <laughs> double death break. Um, but I kind of went against that and because I wanted to see if I can get away with uh, Luna because the way that her skill 3 works, if she would reset her skill fast enough um, to be able to keep that defense break up uh, as consistent as possible. And based on my current gear, that was definitely not the case. So uh, what I'm noticing is... Because Luna, if she's the only death break, regardless, you guys saw my effectiveness. If she does not land the defense break, um, basically first try, <laughs> it can slow the run down uh, dramatically. Okay, uh, because you guys got to understand that building Wyvern team where, wherever you're at doesn't matter. Um, defense break is really, really important. So um, unless you're running, uh, you know, Luna with like Terran our guard, uh, another hunter with Infinity Deer Basket or Rosa, or you're maximizing basically your team attack potential if you are running, if you guys are running a bunch of Unity sets, um, it could get really, really tricky uh, running Luna as your primary defense breaker in your team, okay? Um, so I'm just playing with that. So like I said, there's some other stuff that I want to test. I want to test my <laughs> general purchase front line to see if the turn advantage could compensate for, uh, you know, having, you know, if I wanted to keep Kisei, and uh, Luna, or if opting in for like a Clarissa or taking Kisei out for a Terranor Guard, running the Terranor Guard on like a Daydream, um, just putting my Kisei's gear on Terranor or something like that, um, I wanted to see if that's going to be more valuable to do. Because as we get to the Wyvern, uh, you guys will see here. So let's see how this is going to work out. Wyvern's going to attack. Um, what's her face? Idol's Cheer is good. Now, I think it would be a little bit more effective if Idol's Cheer, uh, if I had Luna's attack power a little bit higher. Um, but, like, when I look at 
sometimes uh, the idle steer actually does increase l Luna. Like, I, I don't know what the conditions are, <laughs> but I've, I've seen it happening, and I'm trying to figure out what the, what the difference maker is. Uh, well, maybe we'll test again at 60, but at this point right here, this is this is the this is the sticking point. If she lands death break here, uh, this is good because what this allows us to do is kind of do our thing um, and maximize the damage output. But but um, if we don't maximize the damage within a certain amount of time because our team is obviously not as fast as the wyvern. Um, it creates this thing where we're just kind of gambling on the defense break. So, and this is why I was saying, like, when you guys are kind of structuring, especially your Wyvern 11 team, um, <clears throat> I don't, I can't really say uh, that Luna is going to be your primary defense breaker in your team. So I say she, she'd definitely be more effective with uh, pairing her with some other unit that breaks defense. So Terranor Guard, um, if you guys are going to be pairing her with Clarissa, if you guys are going to pair her with Karin, uh, or, you know, pairing her with another two-turn death break, or if you guys are able, um, you guys are able to run like a can or something. Um, so you have two units that have like a two-turn death break. So that way death break is consistently applied and your damage output is maximized. Otherwise, like I said, when I first put Luna in my team, I just threw some gear on her, took Terranor's gear, threw it on her. <clears throat> my runs were actually slower. Uh, because I didn't have uh, as consistent of a death break as I needed. But overall, um, I'd like to say Luna's a beast. Regardless, her third skill's nasty. I used her in Guild Wars. <laughs> I mean, she's she's pretty sick. But <laughs> there's some other stuff that needs to be in play. Now, uh, your next question, I'm like, okay, cool. All right, D, I got, you know, this many defense breakers. How do I position them? So what I'm thinking is... When looking at this and running a team with Luna, especially in Wyvern, is you're going to want your consistent defense breaker. So your turn one defense breaker, whether that's Clarissa, whether that's uh, TG or Terranor Guard, you're going to want them to go first. So you're going to position that unit so it's faster than Luna. Okay. And so that way, that unit just goes, 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 goes. Preferably, if you have your, your one-turn defense breaker uh, with the highest attack team or, or the highest attack on the team if you're running Idols Cheer. That way, like if your Terranor Guard has the highest attack or your Clarissa has the highest attack, um, they're the ones that are going consistent all the time. And it gives you the opportunity to keep that defense break pleasant, uh, present. And then think of Luna's defense break on her skill three um, as just kind of a pot sweetener. <laughs> so if she uses it and she you get it in there, then you're good to go. Um, and and I feel like overall for positioning wise in terms of Luna, that's going to be the most efficient way uh, to to get your team where it needs to be. So that way, you know, Luna can maximize the amount of damage that she can deal. Because uh, like I said, overall, it, it ultimately just depends on how you how and where you're placing these units in order to get the full effect. Now, in terms of of Luna. In her overall, just optimal build. Some people are like, well, what, you know, how should I build her? You know, what, you know, what should I do? Should I put her on attack set? Um, should I put her on speed? Should I put her, to be honest, guys, you can put her on any set that you want. For real. Like, you can put her on any set. Like, what I'm probably going to end up doing is I'm probably going to take my Kisei's gear. Where's Kisei? Kisei, Kisei, Kisei. Um, I'm probably going to take this gear off of Kisei and throw it onto uh, Luna. I'm probably going to lose this chest piece here. Um, and I'm just going to try to get as much crit damage as I can since I can basically float almost 30% crit rate. Um, and then after that, um, I'm going to then put the gear that I have on Luna uh, on somebody else and try to maximize this crit rate. I'll probably put, I'll probably put this gear back on Terranor um, and see if I could run, see if Team Attack is going to be more effective or... Um, if I like, you know, Terranor with the positioning a little bit better, but you know, it's just going to be kind of a wait and see. Uh, and then that's just overall, um, optimal sets. If I had a choice, I'd probably run Luna on unity gear, uh, mainly just because the more she team attacks, the faster she gets her cooldown, the more the, the faster her third skill is available and, and the more consistent the death break is overall. 
Okay, so I'm thinking of unity sets, right? Like a crit damage unity um, or a full unity set, like all damage with a crit damage neck attack percent attack percent, um, making her crit, getting her crit to a position uh, with her passive in order to put her at a place where she's at least 100% crit all the time because uh, I want to take advantage of that. I know some people are going to be like, but yeah, but you got elemental advantage on all, whatever, whatever, and you can kind of fudge it. I, I get that. But just for my own personal comfort, that's probably what I will do. <laughs> All right, just 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 for me. Now, um, so so that's kind of what I'm looking at. And then, um, like I said, I'd run Unity, and then I'm looking at how do I maximize her third skill so she gets as many turns as possible. Who do I have to pair her with? I'm pairing her with like Kitty Clarissa, and I'm you know, I'm pairing her with uh, Yuna, you know, for. <clears throat> for like the Rosa Hargana or the Infinity Basket thing. Um, what are the things that I'm doing in order to get her skill three, you know, usable as fast as possible? And that's kind of like the questions that I have in mind. Now, if you guys are new to this game, you guys are kind of just starting, or maybe you guys have started today, or you guys started a week ago, whatever. Luna can basically fit in any of your team comps, especially starting out before you get to floor 11, because her, her skill three gives her <clears throat> element advantage against all enemies. So, you can pretty much squeeze her in anywhere if you'd like. Um, so that's really nice. You can use her in Gale Wars. You can use her in Arena. You can use you can use her in Arena. <laughs> Although I wouldn't say that she's the best choice for Arena. But you can absolutely use her there. Um, but yeah, definitely you can put her in your Wyvern team. You can put her pretty much anywhere. Uh, this is definitely a unit in my opinion that you can uh, invest in and not worry about her kind of falling off as, as time goes by just because how her kit works. Uh, in Guild Wars, if you position her correctly, she has a lot of one-shot potential. Um, and then, and like I said, in Hunts, I mean, she's just a beast. You could use her um, in the Abyss as well on the earlier floors and stuff if you need a single target damage because, like I said, uh, the defense break is, is really, really nice to have. Uh, but I don't know if I'd run her as a primary defense breaker because, depending on your team comp, will determine how long you have to wait to use that skill. So, anyway, guys, that's all I wanted to cover today. Um, if you guys are looking to hang out with us, uh, I stream every day, twitch.tv forward slash the Monkey Live. Uh, we're always at your camera hanging out, talking shop, anime, whatever, uh, questions about the game, all that good jazz. <clears throat> so, if you guys are looking for a community of like-minded people, just want to hang out, that love the game just like yourself, come join us. Um, and then let, let me know what you think about uh, this character in the comment box below. Uh, so that way when other players come by, if they don't know what to do or they're looking for like an ideal build, you guys can share your ideas that you have with her in the comment box. And when they read those, they can be like, oh, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> so anyway, guys, uh, with that being said, thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, it's your boy, Damone, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.